What's going on guys and welcome back to the best damn YouTube channel in the multiverse King Lister TV um, We are back here tonight with the fifth episode of Troy's Thursday Talks I have a topic of mine that I've been wanting to talk about for a while now But I just haven't gotten around to it and I'll explain to you why um, it's been it's been a uh, it's been quiet here at the channel for the past couple weeks. As I told you guys last week when I did my Stranger Things season three uh, spoiler review, I talked a little bit about it. You know, just between the holidays, my birthday week was last week. I was on vacation, so I did not get a chance to do many videos recently. But we are back. We are here working. I've been plotting some ideas for you guys, as I always tell you. And I'm back here tonight on this beautiful, hot and muggy Thursday evening to talk about. The NBA free agency that has happened so far. And what a free agency period it's been. The free agency period has been hot and humid, just like the summer weather, all year long so far. Um, it has just been one key move after another key move after another key move. I mean, honestly, when the free agency broke, broke out, I wanted to do a wrap-up that week after the first week of free agency, but... I was waiting on Kawhi Leonard to make his decision, and, you know, things just kept falling through, and trades were happening, and I said, you know what, man, let me just give it a couple weeks until the free agency period kind of completely comes together, and then we can really just sit here and kind of vibe about it and talk about what teams, you know, we think make good moves and which ones didn't. You know, but the, the, the key moves that happened, you know, you know, the Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving going to Brooklyn, uh, you know, on the first day of free agency, then the Anthony Davis trade, you know, him getting shipped to LA to join up with LeBron James and the Lakers. Uh, the Kawhi, you know, finally Kawhi Leonard made his decision to go to LA too, but to be a Clipper, and they pulled off a trade for Paul George. And then finally, when Russell Westbrook got traded from Oklahoma City to uh, Houston to be reunited with James Harden, what a crazy, those are just four of the craziest headlines of the bunch. But it's just been such a crazy offseason. It's one of the reasons why I think I prefer the NBA over the NFL. It's just because I think the offseasons are so much more exciting than NFL offseasons. And to be fair to the NFL, the NFL had quite the interesting offseason as well. There was a lot of moves in the uh, offseason this year. It, was, it, it almost felt like I play Madden a lot. And it, it felt like an online Madden franchise this year with the moves that happened to NFL. I mean, players were getting released, players were signed other way, players were getting traded. It was it was crazy. But football, like basketball, is a team sport, obviously. But with football, one guy can't truly make or break your team. Now in basketball, I don't think one guy can win you a championship, but one guy can change the culture of your team and, and she, I mean, look at Kawhi Leonard last year. You know, he gets traded to Toronto from uh, the Spurs. And honestly, he, he was one player. I mean, obviously Siakam got better. And uh, Kyle Lowry performed in the playoffs. And uh, Van Vliet got better. And so they had these guys around him. But Kawhi Leonard being an upgrade over DeMar DeRozan was the true factor that led them to an NBA championship. You know, and that's not like that in football. You can have a great quarterback. You can acquire a great quarterback and still have a subpar team just because, you know, you don't have a defense around them or offensive line to protect them or whatever it may be. But basketball is a different kind of sport where, you know, one guy can come in and really change things for your, your whole franchise. And I think this offseason has just been so incredible and fun to watch as a fan of the sport. Um, just to see these players, you know, uh, these moves happen. And it's just, I can't wait. I cannot wait until late October next year or this year uh, to see these these games kick off and the season begin. I'm already, look, I'm already looking forward to next year's playoffs so much. It's, it's crazy to think about. Um, you know, but I was thinking to myself, too, with all these moves that happened and how it's kind of coming together and how it's all kind of, being put together to, towards, uh, you know, when the season starts, I started to think to myself, how, are we at the end of the big three or super team era, let's call it? You know, there's always been great teams and dynasties in the history of the NBA, 
but most of them were put together by an owner or a GM or a coach or whoever is the one constructing the team. Because, you know, you think of some of those great teams, you know, the 60s Celtics or the 80s uh, Celtics or Lakers or even the 80s Sixers or any of those great dynasties that have been, uh, you know, the Lakers in um, the late the late 90s and early 2000s, you know, so many great dynasties in the history of the league, but they've been built through drafts or free agencies, but with the owners and the GMs calling the shots. LeBron James, when he made his decision to go to Miami the first time around to join with Chris Paul and Dwayne Weed, he kind of ushered in that player era of player empowerment and players deciding, you know, where they wanted to go and who they wanted to play with. And they weren't leaving uh, as much of that control up to the front office anymore. And they were taking that power in their own hands. And I actually liked it. I know a lot of people didn't, but I like players being able to control their own destinies uh, for the simple fact that, you know, it's a business. We understand it's a business. And, you know, you think about some of these young kids coming out of college or, you know, the one and dones, they, they, you know, you tear, you know, you blow your knee out two years in a row, they're quick to get rid of you. They don't want to pay you or see you or hear from you. So I don't mind players who have earned the right to say, you know what, man, I'm not happy where I'm at and I want to go elsewhere and I want to team up with somebody and I want to win championships. I, you know, now there's such a thing as ring chasers, which I don't really appreciate chasing a ring which you could argue some people have done. A lot of people said KD, KD did it. You know, <clears throat> thinking back on it, when KD made the move to go to Golden State, I wasn't a fan of the move. I think I thought it was a really weak move. I mean, he joined the reigning two-time MVP. Steph Curry was the reigning two-time MVP, the first ever unanimous MVP, and Kevin Durant went there. He just got beat by... Steph Curry and the and the and the Warriors the year before, and he went and signed with them. So I didn't like that move then, but KD proved to be the man when he was there. They won two finals with him, and yes, that team was loaded, but KD was without a question the best player on the team. He won both finals MVP. So to me, he earned he he proved his move right, if that makes sense. All in all, that could all be a thing of the past because it seems as we're going, we're moving forward and getting away from the super team big three era and getting back to a uh, a league full of dominant duos, dynamic duos, if you will. And that reminds me of my childhood growing up in the late nineties and early two thousand, in early two thousand, watching NBA teams. You know, you think about you know Jordan and Pippen or Shaq and Kobe. You know, uh, any of these great duos that have been around in the NBA history, these pairings of two players who are superstars and transcendent players for the, for the generation coming together to try to win championships. And I've, I've just started looking around the league, and there's not many big threes. I can't think of one true big three right now in the league. Now, there are some teams that have two really good players and maybe a solid third, but for me to be considered a big three, you have to have three legitimate perennial all-stars, elite players. So what that means to me is if you have three of, say, the top 20 players in the league on your team, or maybe 25, that is a big three. Uh, you know, or three guys who constantly make the all-star team, or, you know, that three guys who could be franchise faces of their, on their own coming together that's a big three but we have a lot of duos you know i mentioned you know kd and Kyrie coming together in brooklyn we have harden and uh russell westbrook now in houston Kawhi leonard and paul george with the clippers Joel Embiid and ben simmons with the sixers lebron james and, and ad with lakers Giannis and chris middleton in milwaukee and we still have the splash brothers in golden state we still have steph curry and clay thompson together in golden state uh, we're going to talk about them a little later down the road because I feel like they're getting super disrespected, but we'll get to that in a bit. But yeah, so I, I think we're we're, leaning, we're getting towards this era going forward now of maybe more dynamic duos versus less big threes, and that could be a good thing. I think it's it's should be better competition for the league. I actually think next year seems wide open. I mean, for the past five years, honestly, it's felt like wherever LeBron's at, 
is going to be the finals and the Warriors, you know? Because LeBron always found a way to get, you know, the guys he needed. You know, in, in uh... In Miami, it was him, you know, him, Wade, and Bosh. And, and then you go back to Cleveland, it's him, Kyrie Irving, and Kevin Love. And even after um, Kyrie left, it was still him and Kevin Love and a bunch of role players in Cleveland. And LeBron made it work because he he ran the East. He owned the East. And then, obviously, the West juggernaut was the Warriors. And they were the elite juggernaut. I mean, this is a team who won 73 games and then added Kevin Durant. So that's just crazy to think about. But now that a lot of these moves have happened, you look around the league and you go, there's not one clear-cut favorite to me, in my opinion at least, to win a championship next year. There's not. Uh, some people are saying the Clippers. Some are saying the Lakers. Some are saying the Sixers. Some are saying uh, you know, the Nets. Some are saying uh, Milwaukee. There's all these different teams, but there's so many. To me, I think there's going to be so many elite teams next year going forward that I'm really excited for it. And I just can't wait to see it. But um, let's let's talk about some of these teams individually and the moves they made and what I think, um, what their what their grade should be for the offseason they had so far. And we're gonna start with my boys, the the boys in Philadelphia, the, the boys who play on Broad Street, Joel Embiid, Ben Simmons, the Philadelphia 76ers. I'm gonna give them an A minus for their offseason so far. I'm gonna give them an A minus. I actually really enjoyed their draft. I like the fact that they kept Tobias Harris. I saw a lot of people saying that the, the, the Tobias Harris signing was it was too much, you know, four years or five years, whatever it was, one eighty million. Listen, I understand it's a lot of money. It sounds like a lot of money. I get all that, but honestly, man, like you know, in this era of free agency run basketball, everybody's getting overpaid. Now I'm not saying you should overpay, but everybody is overpaying. You know, a lot of people. I'm going to speak as a fan for a second before I be, uh, you know, and biased before I get non-biased. But a lot of people have been, you know, clowning me or texting me and, and laughing at the moves the Sixers make and, and stuff like that and asking how I feel about it. I love it. Listen, the Sixers are legitimate, whether you like them or you don't, they're a legitimate top five team in the league. All right? Last year, they made it to the second round of the playoffs and they lost to the Toronto Raptors on a buzzer beater. Okay, a buzzer beater, last second, tie game, game seven in Toronto. The Kawhi Leonard hit an all-time fantastic, great shot and then end up going to win the finals. That could have been the Sixers. Honestly, it could have been. If that ball doesn't bounce that way, that could have been the Sixers run last year. You know? So all these questions that, you know, these poking fun at me about being a Sixers fan and the moves they made, I love it. I love it. This is a team who won like 18 games a couple years ago. They were tanking. They had they had they're winning under twenty five games yearly. Yearly, they started like zero and twenty seven one year, zero and twenty seven, zero and twenty seven or whatever it was they started that one year. It was terrible. You think I'm upset because they paid Tobias Harris and they paid Ben Simmons to keep them on the team? No, I'm not upset. It's not my money they're spending. I mean, if you okay, yeah, I'm a fan. I buy merchandise. I buy a ticket. That money goes into the team, but it's not my actual money. They're not calling me up saying, "Hey, Troy, we need you to pay Ben Simmons to stay in Philadelphia." It's not happening. They have that money whether I buy fifty of these t-shirts or not. To be clear, this is a Joel and B t-shirt, not Ben Simmons. That's no knock on Ben Simmons. I'm just being clear. But I'm not upset about it. I'm happy about it. They're a top five team in the NBA. They have a legitimate chance of being an NBA Finals appearance next year. Why would I be mad about that? I'll wait. But anyways, Sixers offseason. I did like the fact that they signed to uh, kept Tobias Harris. They re-signed Ben Simmons down to a deal. They signed Al Horford. I love the Al Horford move. It's such an underrated move. I know he's a little older. I know he's a veteran. But his leadership skills are going to be good for that locker room and good for the playoff poise. He's going to be good influence around Joel Embiid. And he can be, he'll be a good stretch four for his team. He can shoot the three. He can shoot the three ball for sure. So he'll be a good stretch four. He's a great defender. And when Joel sits, or if he gets hurt, or whatever happens, Horford can slide to the five spot. It's a great signing. Now, do I love it for over $100 million? I don't love it for that much money. 
but I like it. I'm with it. I'm for it. I think for the team, it's good. It makes sense. I like the signing. Um, you know, Jimmy Butler left. Obviously, Jimmy Butler, you know, Jimmy Butler makes me laugh because this is a guy who talks about he wants to win. He wants to win. He'll do whatever he takes to win and blah, blah, blah. He went to Miami. He's not winning in Miami. I'm sorry for the Heat fans out there. If you're a Heat fan, I apologize to you, but you're not winning anything next year. And you're not going to win anything with Jimmy Butler as your best player. It didn't happen in Chicago. It didn't happen in Minnesota. And it didn't happen in Philadelphia. He wasn't the best player in Philadelphia last year, but but it didn't happen in Philadelphia. And it's not going to happen in Miami. Who, him and, him and Whiteside? Oh, Whiteside got traded, didn't he? He did get traded, I think. Um... That's right. I, I joked about uh, Whiteside left the East because he's afraid of Joel Embiid. Um, so, yeah, I don't see why, you know, the Heat fans should be happy. Jimmy Butler's probably happy. He got paid, number one. And now, number two, he's on his own team. Well, he'll be the star of the team, without a doubt. There's no young up-and-coming star who's better than him. He has all the shine now in South Beach. He can smoke cigars and eat Cuban sandwiches all he wants. Have a blast in Miami, Jimmy Butler. Good luck. Um, getting out of the East with Giannis, Joel Embiid, and uh, KD eventually in the Brooklyn Nets. Good luck with that. Um, the reason why I can't get the Sixers an A, an a or an A-plus is because I'm not sold on the bench moves. Okay? I like Mike Scott. I think Mike Scott is a tough, gritty guy. I like bringing him back. I like some of the other pieces they added to the bench. But I'm not so You know, you need a sixth man. To, in, in my opinion, to be a great championship team, to be a championship team, you need a legitimate starting five that includes three guys who can score the ball for you. So you have your top two, and then your number three guy. doesn't have to be a superstar, but it has to be a third guy. And then you need that sixth man, the guy who, when the bench unit comes on the floor, he can hold it down for your starters so things don't go crazy. And, you know, honestly, I don't know who it's going to be for the Sixers. I don't, I don't, you know, I'm, I'm hoping maybe the uh, second year player, the kid they drafted last year who missed most of the year, he can come out, maybe he, he could be a big addition. I'm not, I'm not sure how it's going to work, but I do like the moves overall the Sixers made. And I do expect, honestly, I'm, I'm being honest this year, I, I can't take another second round exit. It is, to me, it is Eastern Conference Finals or bust. Personally, personally, I think they can get to the Finals. But it's Eastern Conference Finals or bust for Philadelphia this year. Period. Let's move on. Let's go over to Brooklyn. Um, I give I give the Nets an A. I give the Nets an A for their moves. You you signed Kyrie Irving. You got him out of Brooklyn or uh, out of Boston, and you signed KD. That's that's disgusting. Um, now there's questions that there won't be KD at all in the 2019 2020 season. We're not sure. Obviously, he had the ruptured Achilles ankle or ruptured Achilles injury, so we're not sure how long that's gonna, you know, how long he'll be out. Um, in one of my previous videos, I talked about talked about that before, but even if even if just they just have Kyrie this year, Brooklyn's a good team. Brooklyn's a good tough team who last year took my Sixers to five games in the first round, um, and they'll be a playoff team again for sure. Even if it's just Kyrie Irving this year. They're, they're a team who, who will make the playoffs and possibly make the second round. Now, when KD comes back next year, even if he's never the fully the same player, okay, even if it's not the same level KD, say we only get 80, 85% KD level from what he was in Golden State, okay, I'll take an 85% KD and Kyrie Irving any day. That That's still going to be a very, very scary combination going forward for them. I think Brooklyn... Um, great, great for them. You know, um, the the new Jer and when they were the New Jersey Nets, they were always looked at as the, you know, the ugly, you know, um, the ugly stepsister of the New York Knicks. You know, and then they moved to, they moved to Brooklyn, and they still didn't get the love and respect they deserved. And I think that uh, now they, they to me they're they're the team in New York. You know the. The Knicks play at MSG, which is always going to be the basketball mecca. But right now, the Brooklyn Nets are looking like the team in New York, and good for them, man. Um, looking forward to seeing how you know those matchups with the Sixers go on going forward. 
Let's hop across the country to Los Angeles. We're going to start with the Lakers. As you guys know, I'm a big LeBron guy. I've always been a big LeBron supporter. I consider myself a LeBron fan. Um, and I think the Lakers, I think they, they have some good moves too. I'm going to give them an A- minus as well. I like the, the retool roster they have. I think the roster looks, at least on paper, it looks better matched up than the roster they had last year. I think LeBron AD is probably, I think is the best combo right now, the best one-two combo in the league. We'll see how AD plays this year. Um, Cause obviously last year he was injured a little bit. The, you know, the trade demands, he didn't have as strong a season, but AD is a, is a freak. I mean, he's dominant down low. He can shoot the ball. He's a great defender. He, he's, he's a freak athlete. So, I think if you look at all the top duos, you know, the ones I mentioned earlier, I think I would put LeBron and AD as the number one duo uh, in the league, I think. I Personally, I that's what I think. Um, but, yeah, I, I like the move. I think they're going to be a much better team last year. They got to get to the playoffs this year. There's no excuse, man. LeBron, you got to get them to the playoffs. I love you, and I support you, and I still, I still think you're the best player in the world. It's not a popular opinion. The popular opinions are the KDs or Kawhis of the world. But I still think you're the best player in the world. You got to get the team to the playoffs. You know? And uh, my only concern, this, the thing with the Lakers is, is the reason why I can't give them anything higher than an A- is who's their number three scorer? Who is it? I said before, I think to be an elite championship team, you need three guys. You need your, your, your dynamic duo and then your third guy who helps with scoring, and then your your role players, but most importantly, your sixth man. Your sixth man off the bench, your first guy off the bench, is the most important role player. I don't know who the number three scorer is for the for the Lakers. Is it Kuzma? I don't know if I trust Kyle Kuzma to be the third, you know, the third, you know, the third leading scorer on a championship team. I, I don't know if I trust him just yet. I like Kuzma. He has a good upside, but I'm not so sure if I if I love him as the 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 third option um, on a championship scoring team or a championship te uh, winning team. But we'll, we'll see how that works. Let's let's stay in Los Angeles and talk about the Clippers. I'm gonna give them an A. I think just for pulling just for pulling in Kawhi Leonard, you get an A. I mean, honestly. The Clippers were mentioned for a long time, you know, as an alternative to him to go there. But who honestly thought that Kawhi Leonard was going to go to the Clippers? I don't think Clippers fans believed that he was going to be a Clipper. But sure enough, this man ended up as a Clipper. Um, kudos to them. Great job. You know, and, they, and it made it happen because they traded for Paul George. They have now arguably two of the best, maybe the two best, um, two-way players. Meaning playing offense and defense. PG and Kawhi are both dirty on offense and dirty on defense. So I think it's, you know, they're going to be tough to play against, man. My only concern with that is, is Paul George's health. Uh, Paul George was a banged up guy last year. We know he has shoulder issues. I think both his shoulders were messed up last year. Maybe a knee too. Uh, how much more does PG have in him? I mean, I remember when he had that real nasty injury back in Indiana. Um, obviously, he fully healed from that. But this has been a guy who was, he was the man in Indiana for a while and carried that load. And then he came to Oklahoma City and he tried to help Russell get one. You know, now here he is in, in, in L.A., you know, being a Clipper with Kawhi. I wonder how much does he have to left in the tank. He's not an old guy, but I just think, you know, wear and tear on the body, the injuries starting to pile up. His, his health is going to be key to what the Clippers could do over the next few years. If PG's always banged up and he's missing time and he's missing playoffs, I don't know if they're as good as they think they are. I do love Kawhi Leonard, and I think he's a great player, and he's probably one of the top five players in the league, and he went on an unbelievable run last year in the playoffs. A historic run, honestly. He's legit, legit, elite. But I don't know. Nobody can do it by themselves, and I just think that last year... A lot of things worked out in his favor that helped them get to where they got, you know, honestly, you know, I, just, you know, um, the shot against Philadelphia, you know, that, that bounce, man, 
again, I say it all the time, you know, if that ball doesn't bounce in, man, who knows how that game ends up in overtime? You don't know. If, if the Sixers end up winning that game in overtime, this Kawhi run was was stopped short. You know, and then also when you go to the finals, you know, and really you played a you played a bang. I'm not taking anything away from the Toronto Raptors or Kawhi Leonard, but they played a banged up Warriors team. No Kevin Durant, and when he did come back, he got hurt and knocked out for the rest of the series. Klay Thompson was on one leg. He ended up getting knocked out. I mean, Andre Godala had injuries. There was injuries all around on this team, this Warriors team last year. They were more banged up last year than they've been ever on their entire run. So I don't know if I truly, truly say Kawhi did it on his own. I mean, he was the only superstar in Toronto, but I just, a lot worked in their favor last year for them. Um, but, you know, history will always remember that Kawhi Leonard won a tear and they won the championship. So we'll see how that goes with them. And then the Rockets. I'm going to give the Rockets a B plus. Look, obviously, at this point in time, Russell Westbrook is a better basketball player than Chris Paul. I don't know if he's a better true point guard. I think Chris Paul might still be a better true point guard. But Russ is a better basketball player. He's younger. He's faster. He's more athletic. He can score better. Um... You know, he's a walking triple-double. The, the Rockets now have two MVPs in their backcourt in Westbrook and James Harden. That is crazy. Um, you know, I think it's it's going to be crazy. It's going to be interesting to see. But who's going to be the point guard of this team? You know, James Harden's been running point guard, or he was running point guard until Chris Paul came. Is he, is he going back to point guard? Are they going to play Russ off the ball? Is Russ going to be point guard? And Harden's going to play off the ball? I'm really interested in seeing how that works. I won't give it an A. I give it a B plus because I don't think they're gonna. I don't. I don't think they can work together. There's not enough shots. There's not enough basketballs to go around for James Harden and Russell Westbrook. In my opinion, I don't know how this would work. You know, uh, Russ is a great player, and Harden's a great player in their own ways. You know, they both do their thing very, very well. But neither one of them has won anything. Uh, they got close together when they were with Kevin Durant way back when. When their big three, uh, Harden, Westbrook, and Durant, lost to the Wade, LeBron, and Bosch big three. But, you know, that's a long time ago. They were young players then. It's been, I think, seven years, I think, since that happened. You know, and we've seen what happened with Durant and Westbrook, and they fell apart. And Durant goes to Golden State and wins rings. And now Westbrook and Harden are reunited in Houston. And we're going to see, you know, they'll be fun to watch for sure. They'll definitely be a fun team to watch next season. And I think they can shake it up in the West a little bit. But I don't know. I can't see them beating the Lakers or the Clippers, really, for that matter, in a seven-game series. So we'll see, man. I, I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen with them. But I, I don't love their moves as much. But I'll give them a B-plus because I do think that Russell Westbrook is an upgrade over CP3. Speaking of CP3, man, poor CP3. Um, this guy gets shipped to Oklahoma City, where he's the only guy over there. Not only, not only is he the only guy, but they basically want to ship him out to because they don't want him to play there. They already said their plan is to not have Chris Paul play there next year and trade him somewhere else. Only problem is nobody wants to trade for him. Nobody. They're trying to get rid of him, and nobody wants to take him. I don't know what's going to happen with Chris Paul. Honestly, I think Chris Paul's career is done. I think he can still play basketball. I think he's he has a great IQ, um, and he, he can still be a, a good point, a really good point guard for a team. But I just don't know if Chris Paul is a guy who's going to make a difference on your team anymore. He was maybe five years ago, but I don't think he's that guy anymore. Where he's like, wow, Chris Paul. Like I don't, I if the Sixers are playing somebody and Chris Paul is the other team's best player, I'm not really scared. What's he going to do? Score 15 points and get 14 assists? Woo! Ooh, Chris Paul, scary. I'm not worried about you, Chris Paul. Sorry, not worried about you. And I, I said the same because I've always loved Chris Paul, and I really wish he would have got a ring. But I think he is in the twilight of his career, and I think it's safe to say that Chris Paul, unless something crazy happens, unless he gets traded somewhere where the team is, is already a championship-level contender, and now he's there, and maybe he can – Add just a little bit to get them over the edge, but I don't think I think he's going to retire. He's going to end his career not getting a championship, and that's 
That's kind of sad. I don't really care what the Celtics did. I know there's a lot of Celtics fans out there who were going nuts. They loved all their moves. They, you know, at Ed, this Cantor, and this Cantor is a good player, good solid player, but he's not a, he's not a difference maker. I think it's a downgrade from Al Horford personally. Um, maybe I'm biased because I'm a Sixers fan and I hate the Celtics, and I think that we got Horford. But I'll be honest, I, I don't think Cantor is an upgrade over Horford, and Kemba Walker is an upgrade. It's not an upgrade over Kyrie Irving. Kim Walker is a dynamic player, hell of a baller, and that kid can score. And I think with Brad Stevens as the coach, and obviously Tatum and Brown as his running mates, I think that Kemba will lead the Celtics to the playoffs. So they'll definitely be a playoff team, for sure. But all that talk about them being a, a top two team in the East and a, a finals appearance, I can't see it. I can't see it. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe they'll prove me wrong. If you're a Celtics fan, you're probably watching this, you probably want to smack me, or you're probably throwing something at your screen right now. But I'm sorry, they're not. They're not. They're not to me right now. They don't look like a team who's going to go to the finals. I can't see uh, Kemba Walker, Jason Tatum, and this Cantor team being in the finals. Can't see it. Can't see it. So I mean, I, I don't really, you know, I don't think much of that move overall. Um, I think they had to do something. You know, a couple years ago they had Isaiah Thomas. I think this team is a little bit is I think this team is like I want to say a little bit better. This is like the same kind of version of the team they had when they had Isaiah Thomas. That's what this team reminds me of now. You know, because a lot of people love Jason Tatum. A lot of people love Jason Tatum, but I don't think he took enough steps from year one to year two that people should be you know loving him the way they do. Good kid, good young kid, probably be, a, probably be a good baller, probably have a long career. You know, but people hark on my boy Ben Simmons for not taking any leaps. I don't think Tatum took any leaps. Tatum actually looked worse in year two than he did in year one. Now, that could be because of Kyrie Irving and, you know, Gordon Hayward. I actually forgot about Gordon Hayward. I forgot they have all, I forgot all about Gordon Hayward. But I still don't think they have nothing. They're going to be a good team. They're going to be a good team. And they're gonna be a playoff team. They'll probably be a top six seed in the East for sure. Well, top five, maybe. Let's see. Let's see who's in the top five. You got no order, but Philadelphia, Milwaukee, Philadelphia, Milwaukee. Who else is in there? Brooklyn will probably be up there. I guess Boston. I think Indiana will be really good again next year. Um, Jimmy Butler could probably get Miami back to the playoffs. I don't know. We'll see how it works out. I mean, it's a we're a long ways away. We gotta see how the rookies come in. We gotta see these players actually get on the court and play. So I'm looking forward to the season, man. Um, very excited. I really, 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 really uh, can't wait to see some of these teams get in, get in, you know get uh, get on the court and really duke it out. But okay, guys. So drop in the comments down below. Let me know your favorite NBA team. What team do you think had the best all season? What's your What's your top duo, dynamic duo in the NBA right now? And give me your early, early 2019-2020 NBA Finals predictions. Drop those in the comments below. If you like this video, as always, like, comment, share, subscribe. You guys know the deal. Thank you for tuning in. I appreciate you guys. Too sweet. Trust the process.